All right, guys, so ASL 14, I played the qualifiers on day one. Again, I was uh, unable to play on day two, unfortunately. I'm in the middle of my big move uh, to Canada, and I was just so busy that I literally could not play, unfortunately. I'll play, of course, in all the next ASL qualifiers and everything. This was not my last go. Uh, but yeah, here we are. This I was in uh, group one of day one, very early group, uh, started at 9 a.m., uh, and my first round opponent uh, was a 2400 Zerg player. So 2400 MMR on the ladder. TKVK is the ID that he logged on as. Uh, and the map pool, it goes Vermeer, uh, which is this first map that we're going to be looking at. And then it goes into Polypoid. And then it goes into Eclipse. Uh, so, yeah, it, obviously if you get too old, you don't end up playing Eclipse. But yeah, let's let's take a look. So again, he's 2400 MMR. That is higher than I've achieved on ladder. Uh, and so, yeah, this is Vermeer, which I haven't really played very much. It's a very big map. Uh, my overall plan was to go two racks. Uh, I've mentioned this a lot of times that I've noticed that three racks and four racks pressure just don't work against Zerg anymore. It's so rare to see it work. The majority of the time... Uh, you go for those, and Zerg not only harasses the shit out of your SCVs, but you lose your whole army, and it doesn't do anything. So I've found that to be ineffective. I don't want to do it anymore. I've been going for one Racks Academy uh, and slightly heavier turrets into quicker tech. So let's take a look, right? Okay. Uh, so here, I'm just on the one Racks constant production. Make a little deeper wall. I kept an SCV here just to make sure. And, you know, he made he made eight lings. So he's, like, trying to see if he can get any damage done. If you're doing, like, an Academy Rush build, a uh, Turax Academy Rush build, rather, which uh, is probably the most popular pro build, although it should be falling off soon because it doesn't do anything anymore, um, then something like this has potential because you're not going to have five Marines right now. You would have probably Marines, like, Marine number four would be popping out shortly. Anyways, uh, I get slightly more Marines, throw it on my bunker here. Very defensive setup. I have my SCV still in his base, so I see the Spire timing, which is quite nice. And yeah, I just fill that up. It's a very tight natural, so it's not hard to defend Lings uh, on Vermeer. Uh, pretty, pretty easy overall. Uh, at least in this spot, this is like... This is a really nice setup. He, you would need so many Zerglings to bust this. It's insane. Anyways, I go into my engineering bay. Well, before five minutes, there's my second racks. And I don't add a third racks here. This is the main difference of how I'm playing uh, compared to a lot of players. Now, this type of mineral patch can be a little bit tricky when it's like this. Because you can't put anything in this area and you can't put anything in this area. Uh, because it would block these patches. So, like, you... You can put one there, one here, one here. Uh, I, you No, if this one's here, I think you can't fit one here, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, just got to be careful about that. Again, I don't play this map. Vermeer is not in the ladder pool because Blizzard refuses to actually ever update anything. Uh, so despite this being the most played pro map right now, I've played almost no games on it. So I don't have perfect turret placement or anything like that. Okay, so just taking a look at this position. He's taking his third. I don't know about this third as of yet. Uh, I've got plenty of turrets and everything. I was very happy to get these two turrets up quite quickly down here. Uh, this is one of those spawns, if you look at it. Uh, the Any, any right-hand side main base, where you're in the bottom right corner, this is a very vulnerable area because this is exactly one Marine wide and there's SCVs in here. So if the mutas get over here, your Marines literally can't get down there. A lot of players base their early game on that, on just finding the mutas back here. So the double turret, I think, is very important. All right, so I get my factory started here about 6.30. See, he goes down there, but I have enough turrets. The double turret chase him away. If there was only one, I guarantee you he would have stayed longer. Uh, but yeah, okay defense so far. He's catching up a little bit, right? Like this is, in the current uh, meta game, what I've noticed is Zergs are very gung ho on killing SCVs. They they want to reduce that SCV count, and you can see he's already he's killed a decent amount. Twenty nine I only have here. I should have like thirty five. 
And so, yeah, this is what you see here, right? I got the three turrets before he went in. I have two here, and now I'm just making mass turrets in my natural because the natural is pretty harassable, and I just don't want to lose SCVs. This is, again, like, uh, I haven't seen any pros try this type of style of slightly more turrets, slightly less marines, but this is this is something that, that I've been working on personally. So, And I'll add barracks in a little bit here, as you see. I still have a fair marine count. Here comes my uh, starports, two of them. Here I'm just like kind of poking out to the front, just seeing what's going on there. A couple scans have gone down. So I'm getting up to four racks. Uh, now, here's, here's the big problem here. Uh, I sent this SCV to make the science facility. Okay, so I sent him as these finished. Uh, these add-ons, I want to say they take tw 25 seconds. So I sent this about 25 seconds ago to make the science facility. So this was the big mistake this game. So I told him to come down here. Here, let's just jump back about 25 seconds, and we'll see exactly when that SCV gets sent there. All right, so this... Let's see. Yeah, see, this guy was sent down to make it, and it looks like my minerals popped down. They, my minerals are at, like, 96 when he got there, if you just saw that. So because my minerals went to 96 or so, he doesn't make it, right? So he was supposed to start it about two seconds ago. So let's let's call it 835 is when he was supposed to start this. Takes me a while to notice. I go up to make my science vessels because it should be done. Right? So, unfortunately, it's almost 40 seconds late. Because my minerals dropped to 96 while he was wa walking his his way over there. Uh, so, that this was highly unfortunate. As you can see, I'm like, well, I need more upgrades. My upgrades are going to be slow. Now I don't have vessels forever. I get some siege tanks going because I've lost... Like, the whole point of my build... Right? The whole point of what I'm doing here, of going two racks and adding the extra turrets and getting the quicker factory, is to get the vessels out more quickly. Right? So that I can actually fight the mutas. So this is very, very unfortunate here. This gets me really far behind. Alright, let's take a look. So he's coming in, but I did go... I did land this for an add-on. I thought there was a possibility this would occur. Looks like he flew down here and killed more SCVs. And you can see now I'm... We're about even in SCVs, which is... You want to have more than Zerg, but this is becoming a more and more normal thing in the matchup because everyone's just making lots of mutas and going hard on the harassment. All right, so I finally have some vessels out. And, yeah, I'm doing fine here as far as engagements go. Radiate the mutas once and radiate the lurker. Okay, let's take a look at the position now. Uh, so I, I immediately pumped out a bunch of fire bats because my vessels are so late that I, I'm i barely going to get out on the map before defilers could be to my base. So let's take a look. Does he have it? Yeah, see this? It's already on the way. Now, in in this type of situation, like, look, we're... I mean, it's a big map, but we're pretty close, right? This is like the close spawn is, is horizontal. Uh, so he is just kind of running across the map with the defiler right now. And again, my vessels, like, they were, what, 50 seconds late or so? So that, you know, that's that's a big deal. I'm not going to have the, enough radiates and stuff. So anyways, I just, I made some extra fire bats here. And they saved me right there. Right, like, the Dark Swarm doesn't do anything. I get up here, I kill one of them. Okay, cool. Now here, I had lost medics. Unfortunately, as you can see, I'm super red on my army. See this? So this is a bit unfortunate. Like these are these are a couple new medics. Um, but yeah, I, I lost medics somehow in the battle that we had or whatever. So unfortunately, I can't really put as much pressure here as I want. So, yeah, just kind of pressuring with their radiates and everything. Getting more Raxes up. Command Center coming up as well. 
I'm trying to keep some pressure on. As you can see, he just, just, just got everything out. Uh, so I was unable to, to pressure that more heavily. Oh, yeah. We actually missed my fucking drop. I was actually... It's Monday morning, guys. I'm a little bit slow. Okay, so... I flew a dropship over, and... What I was doing was hitting with this army at the same time as the dropship. This was this was the uh, concept that I was going for here. Let me back it up a little bit. Didn't quite back it up enough. Okay. So I knew he was expanding up to here. You don't want him to get the fourth base up for free. Let's go. Okay, so two Marines ran up here. They didn't really do too much. They were kind of scouting Marines. And so right here, I'm trying to pressure him while getting a drop going, right? He doesn't have that... Well, he does have that many units up here, I guess, but... Let's see what I can get done on the two different locations. It's like, okay, you Dark Storm there. Let's go drop over here. I have the Fire Bat in here, so that's really helpful. And this is me just trying to multitask well enough. Here I'm like almost. This is close. <laughs> right? We have like a sunken against this many 2-1 marines and fire rats and medics. And then like a lurker comes out and pops a defiler and bam. Damn. Right? I'm really trying to get something done because I can't let him get four bases. Four bases is where you start to really fall behind. Uh... Yeah, I have to pull back there. I'm throwing down a Radiates. As you can see, our supply is getting closer and closer, which really means that I'm falling far behind. I tried to do a drop up here. Oh, yeah, that Knight is dying. This was, That was me sniping here, and I just kind of hold position. This drop did well. I was happy with how well this drop did. Like, it didn't do, like, permanent damage, but slowed him down some. Got rid of a Knightus. But now that he's in uh, Ultralisk tech, the dropships don't do very much anymore, and I have to group everything together. But yeah, I'm pretty far behind right here. A little bit wasteful on his attack. My 3-2 is on time, so that's good. My 3-2 will finish before his plus 5 carapace, which is the important thing when fighting against ultras. You have to be equal or ahead of them on upgrades. If you aren't, you just lose. Lots of plagues from this guy. This guy is super plague happy. So here I'm just trying to rotate back and forth. This is one of the hard things, I think. It, like, again, I haven't played Vermeer very much. The bases are kind of far apart from each other. And so rotating back and forth, because this is like how you try to break Zergs, is you keep popping up in different locations and hitting irradiates, right? So you get them kind of a little bit mixed up and you, you hope hopefully find a place where you can break. But takes a little bit to go back and forth. So I'm hitting a ton of irradiates. This is a little bit sloppy of me. I leave these up here. These are mostly plagued. This was like a very bad uh, moment for me, unfortunately. Like, I get a lot of very good irradiates, right? Like, there's a defiler, multiple ultras being irradiated. I irradiated all the uh, lurkers here and whatnot. And I have a really big army, right? And so, fine. I lose everything but one vessel there, unfortunately. So, I lost four vessels. Now, this part, this is unfortunate, right? He still has the Nidus. And it's hard to tell sometimes if they're going to actually be popping Defilers or they're only going to use Ultra Ling. Either way, I think I made the wrong choice here. Uh, like, killing this base was very important because literally, if they get the fifth base, no one in the world is going to beat that Zerg. Five gas? No. I mean, it's fucking Defilers and Ultras only. Uh, but I try to push the ramp. Here, what I should have done. I should have turned this army around. Like, just get out of here. I killed this base. I've raided a ton of high-quality units. Go back, reinforce, get my vessels rotating again. Maybe hit here again. This is probably the weakest spot. But I try to push it, because I know I'm far... I know I'm behind, right? And you can, you can see... Well, I have a much bigger army, but I am behind. I am behind. He has four gases. He has ultras. He has... Uh, he has defilers. And I'm having a hard time, like, this base, if you see, right, like I mentioned, like, this is kind of a somewhat weak location. You have this big bridge you can go over, and you have this smaller choke you can go through. Uh, so this being the third base for Terran is a little bit tricky. 
I don't think I should have taken this one. I probably should have taken this one. Uh, that's more defendable. But a lot of a lot of maps, a, a lot of the time for Terran, uh, your third base is also your rally point. So you're actually defending it without trying, right? Like you're not doing anything special here. Whereas here, it's like, okay, well, you kind of have to have units here, but then your natural's open. So it's like, okay, so you have to have two groups of units? Like you have to have them in two spots? That's a little bit tough. Uh, so I've had a hard time. He's had several counterattacks during everything I'm doing. Which has made me lift this off multiple times and run SCVs away multiple times, right? So that's tough. Okay, so anyways, I tried to push this ramp. I just don't quite have enough here. He sends everything he's got through and just wipes my army. So now suddenly I go from being up like 30 army supply to being down to equal army supply. So that was that was a huge mistake there. The science facility being late was the biggest mistake, but pushing up the ramp... That was uh, that was second, but I'm started. I'm I'm macroing okay here. I'm kind of run out of money though, unfortunately. Throwing my radiates down where I can. My army is just not all that big. And I mean, as you can see, this is just not gonna not gonna work out. I'm having a hard time. All right, so I GG. Uh, so that was game one. Now game one, like I, what I was thinking about after I lost that was the science facility being late was really rough. Um, obviously I regretted going up the ramp. I thought I didn't play too poorly. I thought I played. I thought I played all right. But obviously, when you do things like forget the science facility, that's a huge deal. Or it doesn't make, rather. I didn't forget it. Uh, okay, so on to game two. Now, also, Vermeer is the map I don't play. Right? That's not in the ladder pool. So I have very little practice for it. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, one small little thing. I realized, I felt during that game like I had a little bit of drag on my mouse pad. My big mouse pad that I normally play with here has gotten quite dirty. So I just swapped it for uh, my travel mouse pad. This is like the mouse pad I bring with me to different locations, just a smaller one. Uh, and that helped a lot, no no more drag. Gotta see if I can wash that other mouse pad. Anyways, uh, on to Polypoid. So Polypoid and Eclipse I play all the time, obviously, because they're in ladder. And yeah, I, I felt like, I did not feel like he was unbeatable. Because uh, again, I didn't play that well, Vermeer's kind of big. I, I didn't play that poorly either, right? But I'm like, okay, this is this is doable. Let's just put out a good game here. Okay, so I get the bottom right, which I feel like I spawn in all the time. He's top right, okay. Whatever. I'd actually prefer to play against top right in this position than bottom left, because the natural is the hardest place to cover with turrets here. Main is a little bit easier. And that's just talking about uh, flight routes for mutalisks, right? It's quicker for him to get mutas to my main than to my natural. Whereas if he was over here, it'd be quicker to get to my natural. So there'd natural be, naturally be more pressure here. And the thing is with the turrets, you can fit a fair amount of turrets, but you actually can't repair them. Like you can repair the turret that's here, but not here. If you put any turrets here, they can't be repaired. Uh, the turrets that go up here, this turret ends up like kind of blocking next to your command center, making a very thin path. So it's hard to get up here to repair. And really, once they kill like these two turrets, these patches become very hard to defend. So yeah, it, if they're bottom left and I'm bottom right, it's kind of tough. Sometimes I consider Valkyrie rushing in those those positions. Anyways, I get in there and I see that uh, it looks very aggressive. Uh, I didn't show exactly, but um, here, let's jump to 250. Okay. So... I see him start this uh, hatcher, the the layer at like 253 or something like that, uh, and that generally points towards aggression. Like you're really optimizing for very fast mutas there, and oftentimes very fast speed. So that's something I'm thinking about and I'm watching for. I see all those lings pop out. I'm like, all right, he's gonna play aggressive. Let's let's make sure we're okay. Uh, this bunker placement is not the most defensive, but it's very defensive. Okay, so. Bunker placement, there's like a lot of different ways that you can do it. Uh, if you put the bunker here, it's invincible. But you have to eventually kill it. It's in the way of rotating out, and it doesn't defend anything over here. So like if you have the bunker here, you'll never die to lings. 
but lings can run in and fuck with turrets over here. Okay, so that, that gets difficult. The bunker here does not help. It, it helps more the turrets over here because to run past, you're getting hit, but it does not consistently defend. But it's closer to this side. So this is like uh, one SCV, one Marine gap. Or two Marines, whatever you want to call it, right? Like you just put, you can put just very little here and it kind of fixes it up. There's a lot of surface area that could be had for the bunker, but normally what you'll do is put Marines here and here, and then that just stops Lings from surrounding. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is a pretty defensive. I would, in my opinion, this is the second most defensive bunker that you can put. Unless you do something like, you could always put like a depot in front of it, whatever. Anyways, I'm producing nonstop. And he comes in. Now, very important moment here. This Marine comes down, and we have this Marine that's starting to get hit. He did kind of break through, but you can see what I was talking about, where the holes are very small, so it was hard for him to break through with these Lings. So this is like kind of an important moment where my SVs got up and helped fight the Lings, and I have three Marines left over. Very, 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 very important, because I'm on one racks. It, now, here's the funny thing, right? Because if you're on two racks, and they try to bust you, and you save any Marines... You're really good to go because you're popping two Marines at a time. But when they attack, you have less Marines than what I had there. So the, there's give and take with one Rax Academy versus two Rax Academy. So anyways, I have I have like three Marines left over here. That was a lot of Lings that he sent this early in the game. I know that his drone count is pretty low. He's being aggressive as anticipated. All right, we pop those in. I leave an SCV here. I think that he's not going to make more lings because that's going to really hurt his economy. As we see, he's making more lings. I accidentally have a SCV in the bunker. Pop him out. Okay, okay. This SCV does not give a perfect cover, but it fucks up. Like, see how tight that is? Lings can fit through here, but they have to go single file. So as you see, this place I pause actually shows it really well where if this SCV wasn't here, all these lings would get past in like one second. Instead, you saw both these come down and this guy had to turn around and as he turn around, turns around, he bumps the lings behind him. See that? Screws up the AI so bad. Anyways, uh, that gets pushed back. We got my plus one going, stim is going. I did a couple scans. I saw a scan here with no drones on the natural. So I'm like, this is pure muta. This is pure all-in. Turrets for days. There's really... There's not a lot of options for him. He's on 16 drones. He's, like, really looking for a kill. Oh, yeah. And I think I add a second turret here very quickly. Because he... He just... He needs damage with mutas. So you just have to, like, kind of... Counter that very, very hard. So this is like good turrets to start. This turret's super important on this spot. This, here, let me press A. Okay, this area is super harassable. If you don't have a turret here before they get there, this area, like your Marines try to run down, then they just run in here. Your Marines run back up, they just run out here. So in this, this is the, uh, this is the hardest area to defend. Right? This area is hard. As I mentioned, notice how his mutas fly immediately over everything. I've talked about this so many times, right? This is one Marine thick. So it's impossible to get Marines through that way. Like, I guess you can bring him down this way, but then he just flies up. So this area is super good to harass. This area is super good to harass. And this area. Now, based on where his main base is up here, it takes a lot longer to fly around and harass this area and reinforce. It's easier to harass this area. It's easier to harass this area. Anyways, let's go. So he flies in. I already have the turret there, which is very, very important. He flew to the natural to look to harass here. I already had the turret there. He flies out. That's the most important part of the game right there, other than stopping the Ling, right? The Ling running was probably the most decisive thing he tried to do. But that first harassment cycle, to shut it down like that, where I basically took no damage. Look at this. I'm up 13 workers. I have almost doubled the economy. Huge. Huge. And now I could just add another round of turrets. Okay, save that just just in time. Trying to get that up again. Just 
just got to very quickly get those Marines into position. Uh, now, I think I already got range, which is really, really good. That's 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 the main thing that I like about one Raxacad. I get the stim and range so fast with this build. Really, really helps. Non-ranged Marines have a hard time against Mutas. So here I'm just kind of rebuilding all my defense, right? Adding more turrets on. Whenever someone's going like this, I feel like you just have to continually add turrets everywhere. Let's get another turret here. Another turret here. And he's got to back out. He's taking a lot of damage on these mutas, so he's got to swap some of the hurt ones out, as you see. Getting a full group of higher health. Tries in here again, but I've already added another turret. So this becomes a little bit tough too, right? He he dived on those two turrets, and you can see he's doing exactly what I was talking about, where you're kind of flying back and forth. But I just kind of made my SCVs go to the side and stay there. I'm building... There I was just building up enough Marines. I was adding a turret here. So this turret is supported by those turrets. If he goes for a dive on this turret, these turrets will fire. Uh, so that's... This is to kind of stall him. What I was going to do is, as this is finishing, and I've built a few more Marines... The Marines walk down and then push him out of this area to rebuild these turrets. That's the that's the thought process here. Anyways, he knows what's going on. He knows that I'm like not gonna mine from these patches until the mutas are out of here, so he just flies out. Just lots and lots of turrets as you can see. I will end up scanning a few more times, but you can just tell when you look at the drone counts that he can't even have another base. He's like so, so, so all in. He's trying to come in. We're building more turrets. Catching the mutas here. Yeah, so he's flying in here. Once again, there was a turret here and then some additional turrets. And I left this area a little bit open so my marines could get back. And, of course, we have a bunch of turrets up here as well. So we're just trying to punish him every time he comes in. <laughs> So here I'm going into Valkyrie, but on one starport. I don't have the economy to support two. It's better to get some more Marines. This is not Guardians that I'm against. This is the type of game where... It, like a game that looks like this. At about three Valkyries, you win the game. Can you get up to three Valkyries and a couple groups of Marines? That's, that's what you're looking for. One Valkyrie doesn't quite do it. Let's check what upgrades. Okay, so he has plus one attack, not plus one armor. Which is more common anyways. Uh, armor is much better against Valkyries, but with the attack, you're more likely to kill them early. Uh, but yeah, this is... Like, my economy has taken a couple hits, but it's not bad. 37 SCVs is pretty solid for two base TVZ. Uh, but I've been spending a ton of money on turrets, right? So I'm, I just... I don't have... I don't have that much. Uh, no second gas or anything. Don't need it. Valkyries, you can basically stay on one gas for. But yeah, right now I'm just looking to get some Valkyries out. So here he is. Now he's abusing the third area I was talking about, right? I talked about this area. I talked about this area. And the other one is this one. So he tried this one several times. It didn't work. He tried this one several times. It worked a little tiny bit, but we mostly got rid of him. And so now he's going to the last super abusive area, right? And notice how he gets this turret instantly. He'll get this turret, but like I've added a lot because I know that this shit is coming. This is just like what Zergs do. So he's taking out most of those. He'll come back. And you can see how hard this is to defend, right? Like, he's just knocking SCVs down. And I'm just kind of hold positioning my Marines. The thing is, yeah, he's starting to get some significant damage done here. You can see that our worker count is getting a lot closer. Like, what was I up? 16 workers? And now I'm up 12. So there's, like, a little bit of progress being made for him in that regard. But it's too late, because I already have Valkyries coming out. Because, like, even if he really wrecks in here... Honestly, he could kill all my turrets, make me lift this up and send it into my main base. And as long as I get up to, like, three Valkyries, I'll still win. But you gotta be... You gotta be careful, though. This is one thing I've really learned playing... Here's the thing. This is a superpower of playing the ladder all the time. Is you figure out what actually works against all ends. I say it sometimes when I'm commentating, where it's like, you can tell this guy doesn't just sit around on the ladder, like, for pro gamers. Because they won't quite understand, like, how to stop an all-in perfectly. Uh, whereas, like, when you play against this garbage all day on ladder, when people are just playing best-of-ones trying to kill you with shit, 
the way that you lose this game as Terran is you move out too quickly without the critical mass of Valkyrie Marine. Okay, so like if I I have a ton of Marines right now. Look at this. Look at this. What do I have? I have like 24 Marines probably. So like two full groups and three, four medics. Gonna have more, f another medic popping out here in a second. And I have a Valkyrie. So it's like, oh yeah, we should be able to move out. Valkyries are really good. But if I moved out right now, I would die. So what do I do? Do I move out? <laughs> this is uh, this is me kind of taking a forward position. Bring the Valkyrie up. See if we get any hits. Like, nope. Back up. Back up. You want to do moves like that. Little sharking moves. Right? Just don't lose the Valkyrie. That is the important thing here. Oh. Back it up. Almost lost that. See, that was that was stupid. Do I need to kill this? No. No, I need to hit critical mass of Valkyries. So that was a risk I shouldn't have taken, honestly. So repair that up. We have two Valks, almost three. Here we go. Now he is mixing in Scourge and everything, too. He has a lot of fucking mutas, man. And, yeah, I started a fourth. Now, one of the tricks they sometimes use, I just want to point this out, and I was thinking about this right here. I'm like, if he counterattacks me with the mutas, I'm not sending the Valkyries. Because what they'll do is they'll, like, counter with mutas here, and they'll have two Scourge out of vision here, or four Scourge out of vision here, and they'll wait for the Valkyries to come because Terran players are lazy. And we'll just fly the Valkyries back to defend. And if they catch one or two Valks, it's over. Like, they'll just kill the other one instantly. It'll get, like, one volley off. And then suddenly you're at square one. Hey, Coden, what's up, man? Just all pause for a moment while I go over ASL reps. And as you can see, it's like he even kills one of the Valks there. But I kill everything, so game's over. All right, GG. So now tied up a one-to-one. -one. All right, going into got Boki giving me a big host. Thank you, thank you very much, man. I hope you had a good stream. Appreciate it. Cheers. Okay, so uh, now tied up one to one. I'm like, all right, I lost on the big map. I won against the uh, all in muta play. Let's go down. Game three. Eclipse. Eclipse is small. I feel pretty comfortable. Uh, small maps can be good for Terran, right? Like, it's just like Vermeer can be a little bit hard because it takes so long to get anywhere. Eclipse, everything's pretty close. All right, so my thought process is here. I'm just going to play it normal because I feel like I can beat him. Like, you know, we've we played two games, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, the game I beat him was the all-in game, but uh, like I said, Eclipse is going to be a map I'm much more comfortable on than Vermeer. So I get down here. It's got the gas timing. Uh, notice the gas timing was a little bit quick. So that means that we should be seeing uh, speed very quickly this game. Normally, uh, what will happen is they will reach 100 gas uh, as the pool finishes. Here. Pool finishes up. That's And... Watch, watch, watch. Is, come on. There it is. So, 255. Uh, so, basically, like, what you're looking for here is... If it's 255, that's, like, very optimized. Like, something between 253 to 257, like, that area. That's, like, very, very quick. So, it's more likely you're playing against speedlings. It's more likely you're playing against something more aggressive. Whereas if it's a little bit slower, if it's like five seconds slower, it's like 302, 304, then that's like a more economic play generally. Doesn't always have to be, but it's actually a very good uh, metric to just kind of look at to give you a hint of what's what's likely to occur. Anyways, uh, I did send my Marines out immediately. When I send my SCV across the map on Eclipse, I look at where the Overlord is. And there's certain locations that if I see the Overlord, I know I can get it with the Marines. So when I sent it across and I saw the angle his overlord was coming at, I was like, I think I can kill that. 
So I rally these out. Bam, done. Okay, so right here I feel really good because he's already played some aggressive games and Zergs oftentimes when you kill the Overlord, uh, they'll go extra aggressive because they hate their builds being fucked up like that. But he's actually not. He's not. I thought he was going to. There's speed. But it's not even particularly fast speed or anything. It's just, that's like a normal speed. Throws down a hatchery in his main base. I don't know it. And this is a super defensive bunker. This is, uh, like, remember I said if you put one here, it's invincible. This is super, super defensive. But also protects the turrets. Which is very important. Anyways, that was that was me turtling. Because I'm like, hmm, I think he's going to attack me. But he did, he's not. Whatever. So I'm still just kind of doing my build. Second racks. Get my range. Through my scans down. Going to get my turrets up. Have this little turret formation. Getting a fourth up pretty quickly as well. So, yeah, my turrets are very, very solid here, and I get my factory rather quickly. And everything's really well defended, so I should not really be losing workers. You can see how more economic his uh, his game is, right? Like, he's on 30 workers already. He's just He hasn't made many lings. How many lings does he even have? He has one there. That's, like, it, basically. <laughs> he just... He, it's, a, it's a big difference, like, how this plays out. And he actually... Okay, there's there's the rest of his views. I was going to say, that's like... He stayed on five for quite a while. This is just like a very greedy play that he's doing this game. That's interesting, because I haven't... I didn't watch the replays yet. Like, I'm just going over them. Everything I'm saying, I just kind of remember and what I was thinking during the game. But this is very late on the mutas. So, I feel like he actually countered me pretty well. Because I, I played very defensively with my turrets. I made sure I had enough turrets. But he actually didn't make that many. He poked in like once or twice to try to show me that he was going to do uh, aggressive needless craftsman, but he didn't really do it. That was a good play, I think. Because like, if I know that he's on like five mutas for a while and getting lurkers and then adds mutas just to have the group that you want, then I definitely don't make this many turrets. I don't make this turret. I don't make this turret. I wouldn't have made this turret. Yeah, right? So that's, yeah, it's a little, I've, I've, uh, I've overbuilt turrets a bit. And what that does is that slows down barracks. That's specifically, right? I could have a I could have a little bit more Marines out. It's not the end of the world or anything like that. Uh, this game my science facility has built, so that's nice. I have my double eBay about ready to go. The mutas look like they want to do something now. A few Ling's coming out. I'm trying to scout the map at this point, right? Like Here's an SCV going down here. I have a couple Marines starting to come out on the map to scout. I tried to send an SCV to the top left. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, and now with my uh, my vessels out, I can actually kind of take map control. And you can see he's actually he's playing very defensively. Right? Look at this. He's got he's gonna have four lurkers at the third base with the sunken. The sunken helps so much, by the way. It fucks up AI so much. Uh then he's got lurkers in the main base for anti-drop, which honestly, anyone who goes drops on eclipse, like tries to drop the main base, you're dumb. You're stupid. I see programmers do it all the time. It fucking has never worked in the history of mankind. You can't do it. The map is too small. Everything's too close. It just never, ever, ever works. But yeah, there he is sitting defensively against that. Uh, yeah, three lurkers stacked there. Just kind of getting his evolution chambers going and everything. Okay. So this is me just trying to control the map a little bit. I get my third command center started. We're doing vessel production consistently. We're doing upgrades consistently. This is what we're looking for. I sent a group up here. I, I, oh yeah, I sent this because he was like, he was very actively with Ling's denying scouting up here. So I was just like, okay, let's just send a little group of Marines. We're fine. Here, it's like, okay, I can't really do anything. I considered for one moment trying to do a fire bat bust here, but it didn't feel quite like it was going to do anything, so I skipped. Just 
just hitting my radiates and whatnot. It's kind of annoying to use the mutas and lings here to slow this down. But getting my third up. Okay, so now he's got ultras out. Uh, but my upgrades are on time and everything. Four carapace against two attack. That's that's normal. That's what you're looking for. Uh, and let's just check the timing. Okay, so he's about almost halfway done with that carapace. And I'm a little over halfway done with that attack. So I'm good on upgrades for the game. Uh, that's the main thing that you're looking for, again, is making sure that they do not get ahead on carapace. Because if they do, the ultras do not die. And I've just got like a few units around, right? I'm like trying to keep track of the bases. Because you can actually play against four base here a little bit. Like four gas. And keep them off everything else. Okay. Yeah, I threw a D-Matrix down there that wasn't doing very much. But a lot of irradiates. Just floating in the factory out to scout. Uh, the factory can be floated once the ultras start because you know it's not going to turn into uh, Lurker, Hydra, Defiler. That's the only thing you really need to make tanks against on this map. So yeah, this becomes a good scout at that point. He's trying little counterattacks, but I'm macroing pretty well overall. I have my third starport up. I'm trying to bust over here. Get back into a very defensive stance. Just trying to get as much damage as possible. I thought I was actually going to kill this, but he just had so many units coming up. I really thought I was going to kill that base. <laughs> One thing to note is my SCV count is much better this game, right? Obviously, last game he was super aggro, but... So I have my fourth CC, trying to get that going. I have so many vessels at this point. Uh, and I am switching into Battlecruiser. I probably should have slightly quicker. It's so hard to control this many vessels. Let's count how many vessels I have. That's 12. Dude, no one in the world can control 12 vessels. Six? Okay. Eight? Ooh, we're, we're getting up there, man. Eight vessels is fucking hard. And the thing is, if you fly them all around clumped together, then Plague just... You're like, oh my god, the amount of value they can have for one spell. So right now there's just like tons of action everywhere, right? Like plagues going down, dark storms going down, irradiates going down. Now this is the issue that starts happening to me. This is I mentioned it, Dune Bug. I think like I really should have gone fire bat bunkers here. This actually gave me a revel revelation this game uh, about what happens uh, in any game where you don't have complete map control. Uh, in any game you don't have complete map control, after Hive Tech, you should put up some Fire Bat Bunkers, I think, on a ramp like this. Because this is actually what's going to end up costing me the game. Is these little attacks into the third base. So look, I have to lift this off. I'm almost out of minerals here. Well, we're out of minerals in both locations, right? Like, there's this doesn't count. 90 and 20 and 44 and 220. Okay, so just here. You watch. You watch. This game gets crazy. I have a lot of vessels. I have great upgrades. I'm just being as efficient as we can be. I clean this out. I have the BCs kind of helping. I'm making more BCs. Very annoying stuff, as you can see. Even a couple links come up. BCs can't kill them quick enough. I actually dematrix an SCV there. You missed, maybe. <laughs> the SCV that was being attacked. He retargeted, but I thought it was a cute move. I've never done it before. So yeah, I'm just kind of scanning ahead and getting what irradiates down that I can. Trying to kill this base. Very tough. Lots of irradiates, though. Not many drones here yet. Okay, so as you can see, my economy is kind of shattered, right? I'm like, I barely got anything going on economy wise this base has just been attacked so many times and i don't have any defense here this is truly why i lose this game and you're going to see that in a second 
right? Here he comes again. And it's just like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm just not going to mine. Like, I can send the BCs over and kind of clear it up. But yeah, my BCs now are going on the attack and doing really well. Yeah, this becomes all about my BCs and vessels against everything he has. <laughs> BCs are pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. Here I screw up a little bit. I was trying to get a radi or, uh, Yamato off on the defilers. I get one there. Getting some decent irradiates, but I've been plagued, right? So I don't want to lose the vessels either. It's tough. Oof. So I lose those BCs, unfortunately. But I do have some more down here. Doing, like, erasers and stuff on his drones. We're just trying to get rid of defilers. Uh, the thing I flew into the main base to kill was the defiler mound. Because if there's no defiler, the BCs can actually win the game. Right? The defiler between Plague and Dark Swarm can just shut down BCs. But I did not quite get it. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Maybe I should have used Yamato on it. So I'm, like, Yamatoing uh, Ultras at this point because I'm, like, not even mining, right? I got 96 minerals, 4 SCVs, but I do have a little group of bio. High health Ultras are not going to be my friends, so that's why I was Yamatoing those. Plague. Oof. And he came in with those those little hydras and targeted down the plagued uh, BC, so that was very painful. And okay, so now my bio walks across. See, both of us have almost nothing here. He does have a little bit more. Bio can be microed quite a bit though, right? So he actually this is all he's mining is two two workers. At this point, I basically knew that I lost. He got a plague off there. He still has a defiler. Lose my last vessel. And he has one more defiler. Yeah. There, he, he he was lagging during some weird parts, whatever. Uh, yeah, but that was it. GG. All right. So that was... That was my uh, ASL qualifier uh, run. Um... I was I was pretty upset when I lost because I felt like I absolutely could have won. For Mir, uh, I feel like I didn't play it quite right. I have some ideas on big maps now that I didn't have before. It takes tournament games, I think, to to really figure things out sometimes, because uh, you're you know you're putting out your best stuff. Um, I feel like I learned on the Eclipse game that a hundred percent once map map uh control is gone you need you need bunkers to block for the expansion because if i could have kept that expansion up for any amount of time more because i only lost by like if i had mined for an additional minute or something the game would have been mine because i was i was very close at the end of killing him right he had like three units he had like an ultra and like two hydras a ling and a defiler or something so it was very 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 close there at the end and i just didn't have income for like four or five minutes in the game uh but yeah it was uh it was fun Hope you enjoyed.